said, For Father, thy people, there are such great people. And who is able to minister to thy people? Who hath the knowledge and ability to talk to people of God? He said, I am like a child. I do not have the ability to go in and out among these great people, among this great, these great tribes, among humanity. I don't have the power and ability to stand up and talk to them and tell them what they should do. And, and I, can't, I can't instruct them as to have a full life here. Father, give me understanding. Father, give me wisdom. Wouldn't it be wonderful that if every preacher today would go to God in prayer and ask God to give him wisdom that he might guide God's people. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Instead of relying on seminaries and colleges and all the other things that we try to mix in with the word of God, wouldn't it be better if man would go to God? Now, if you go off to seminary to learn about God's word and you really truthfully, honestly, sincerely study God's word, to learn God's word, not to try to mix something else with it. I can understand that. If you go to school in any way to learn God's word, to study God's word, to grow in God's word, I can understand that. But I tell you something, beloved. When you, as a person, try to mix God's word with something else, when you try to reason and put reasoning in with God's word, or you try to mix something of the world with God's word, it won't mix. A little leaven will leaven the whole lump. You cannot mix God's word with anything. You know, it's like the mustard seed. It doesn't mix, and God's word doesn't mix. You've got to have God's knowledge all together separate from the knowledge of the world. There's too many people today that are trying to mix darkness with light, trying to mix the things of this world and the activities of this life with the word of God and with the things of God. But I'll tell you something, in the end, they're going to get a great disappointment. There is coming a reckoning day and the almighty God is going to call them to judgment and going to deal with them. See, people are not leaving off with their sins. The Bible said if the love of the world is in you, the love of the Father is not there. There's no mistaking that. It's just as God said it. See, and we cannot mix the affairs of the world with the Word of God. There's two different worlds. One is Satan's world. He is the prince of this world. God has given it into his hands. And God tells us that it is the land of Esau and that Esau has control of it. It is given to Esau. That is to the world. It is given to those that love the things of the world. It is made for that purpose. And it tells us that we are children of Jacob. That we are traveling through this land. That we should pay our way and be honest. And we should be upright. We should not Thieve. We should not steal. We should not covet. We should not try to take our fellow man in to, to make a meal ticket off of him. We should pay our way. We should be honest and upright in every way. We should be clean and in heart and dedicated to the cause of God. There shouldn't be any unrighteousness in us whatsoever. We should be clean because we are children of God. We have the God of Jacob and the God of Abraham. We have the great God of heaven that's leading us over into Canaan. Therefore, we don't need to mess around with the things of this world. We don't need to get involved with the situations of this world. We don't need to entangle ourselves with the things that are around us. The Bible teaches a good soldier, he doesn't entangle himself with the world's affairs but he tries to be a good soldier he trains himself that he might please that one which has called him to be a good soldier therefore we are not to become entangled with the things of the world I must serve God. I must love God. I must follow God. I must be God's properties. I must dedicate my life wholly. And you know, this is my conviction today. I believe the reason that the church doesn't have any joy in it, the reason the church doesn't have any real Christian joy in it today is because they're trying to mix too much of the world. You know, if you want worldly joy, go out into the world. Get the world. Leave God alone. Don't try to mix it. Go out there with the world. You can have worldly joy. The Bible said Moses chose to suffer the afflictions with the righteous rather than enjoy sin for a season. He was a great wealthy person. He had everything. He was at the right hand of Pharaoh. He could have had anything that he wanted, but the Bible said he chose to suffer the afflictions with God's people rather than enjoy sin for a season. Now, he could have enjoyed sin for a season. There is an enjoyment there. But he chose the afflictions of the righteous. 
Now, we choose to suffer the afflictions of the righteous that we might enjoy eternal life, that we might have the, ex the extensive joys of God, the unending joys of God. But I believe that in the church world today that the church is without joy. I believe that they've lost the jubilance, that they've lost the great joy of God because they've tried to mix too much of the world in the church. And they have tried to substitute for God's joy, they've tried to substitute it with the things of the world. They've tried to bring into the world things, or into the church, things that belong to the world. And they've tried to mix the world with the church and the church with the world. And God doesn't want that. See, God doesn't have to do that. Why do we try to do that? We don't need to do that. What we need to do is put a distinction between them. We need to separate them. Give Esau his land. Give Esau his way of life. And give Jacob his way of life. And let us remember that God's world is our world. God's creation is ours. But this thing that is called the world at this present time that's under the curse, this thing that God abhorbs because of the things that are going on in it, the, this, this world that... That seems to be so great, God said he would turn into ashes. This world, we don't need any of that. We have God. We have the kingdom of God in our heart. We're waiting till all of this pass away. Because the Bible said the world shall pass away and all that's in it shall pass away. But he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. So then we're not trying to get worldly gain. We're not trying to build a great name in this world. The Bible said that Jesus sought to make no reputation of himself. He did not seek fame and popularity in this world. He wasn't striving to become wealthy in this world. He was looking for the will of God. I know that when you serve God, God will add all of the great things unto you. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich, addeth no sorrow. And I know God will give you everything you need in this world. I know that. God gives houses. God gives land. God gives automobiles. God gives great monetary values. And God gives health. And God gives happiness. And God will give it to you. But God will give it to you through Christ when the curse is lifted off of it. See, he will lift the curse off of it if you'll see Christ first and add these things unto you. But let me tell you, beloved friend, if you seek the things of the world and you go after the things of the world and you try to make a great showing in the world, you're going to be a flop in Christ. You're not going to be able to do anything for God. As far as the word of God, you're never going to accomplish anything. As far as God's kingdom, you're never going to get anywhere. Why? Because you belong to the world. But if you're going to be God's, you're going to have to go after God with all your heart. 